Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to the final part of our HTML, uh, HTML5 CSS3 review website tutorial. Okay, so we're almost done with this review website. If you guys recall last time, uh, we completed everything except for the little pop-up that you noticed in the in my very first video when I showed you the final product. Um, so let me go back to that first video to show you what I'm talking about. This little pop-up here. And I'm going to make this uh, in a fixed position with the image there and all this uh, text to show up. And when I click up here, it's going to disappear, click reappear, and disappear again, reappear, until the user clicks off of it. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm back into my, let's see here, back into my HTML document. And the first thing you want to do here is go to, oh, let me hide this real quick, I don't want to confuse anyone. You want to create a div, id equals pop art, which is what I did here. And I gave it a, uh, an id tag of close x. Uh, I placed the uh, image, I put a div inside here, uh, or another div where I have the image. So I have a div, within a div, inside a div. I hope that doesn't confuse anybody. And I align the image to the left, and I have that paragraph tag in a separate div tag. And then I have a reference to it saying read more inside this href tag. So they click on it and it'll go to that article. Well, of course, I don't have nothing list listed there, so I just have a little placeholder like a number symbol. And of course, I'd end the divs here. And you know, technically, you could place this anywhere you want because this is going to be in a fixed position anyway. But because it kind of makes sense to kind of, you know, place it where. I don't know, it would just would make sense anyway. I'm going to place it right here. So if I were to save this and load it, you will notice that it will look wrong. Uh, you'll notice that the X is up here, and it'll say, give your PC a tune-up right here, blah, blah, and everything is all messed up. And the reason why is because I didn't style it, and I didn't give it a fixed position yet. Basically, it's just following the logical flow of where it would be in the HTML document. So let's go ahead and fix that using styling rules on our CSS. Excuse me. All right, so go back to our style sheet here. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in there. And I'm going to explain everything that's going on here. Okay, so we put section number right, div number pop art, because that's what we called it. I'm putting it in a fixed position. And uh, I want to tell it to go to the right 3 pixels to the top 320 pixels, which is why it shows up down here in our, uh, our website. I want the width to be 310 pixels, 145 pixels. And if you guys are wondering how I came up with these numbers, it was a bunch of trial and error. With all this trial and error. You know, I probably put 100 here at first just to see where it was at. So eventually I was like, oh, yep, that's where I want it. And so that's, what I, that's how I got these numbers. A border, I put a grayish border around it and a grayish type of background. And this visibility thing, I have it uh, hidden, which should not be hidden right now. Let me go ahead and uncomment that. Oops, code, comment. Okay, section right, and then also I have this the div pop art, the divs that are inside there. I want uh, five pixels all around. Uh, the cl uh, close the paragraph tag that contains that X. I want it to float to the right because it doesn't make sense to have the X over here. And I want the border to be solid black and I want a hundred pixel radius so it looks like a circle. I want the cursor to be pointer so it's not this. You know, it turns into an actual mouse click thing. Um, and the image margin right five pixels so it doesn't like butt up against the text. And a font family to Homa, font size, and some padding to the right. Uh, so that's all I need to do for the CSS styling rules. You guys should probably know what all these are by now. So we hit save. And this is the new website, or well, the new rules that we have now. Okay, so now that I styled it, you'll notice that it's in the right position. It's in a fixed position, so in other words, it, it's above the window. That's why it's looking the way it's looking, and it just keeps falling you no matter what. That's why that's why it's a fixed position. It's above everything else. Um, and however, though, 
I want it to disappear at a certain time and reappear at a different time. And the reason why I hasn't been doing that is because I don't have no JavaScript enabled. So, go back to my style sheet here. And the first thing you want to do is go all the way to the top here. Actually, I'm sorry. I want to go ahead and I want to place this visibility to off, to hidden. Oops. And what that's going to do, if I reload this, it should get rid of it. And it does. Okay, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to use JavaScript to dynamically make it come back, disappear, and come back uh, whenever the scroll reaches a certain height and the, uh, or a certain y coordinate and height. So, anyways, after doing that, go back to your HTML document, all the way to the top to where the header is, and this is the function that we're going to use. So you open up with a script tag equals text slash JavaScript. Inside here, I create a function called yhandler. And by the way, this is not my idea. This uh, four lines or five lines or whatever is not my idea. I actually got this from a website called developphp.com from a man named Adam Corey. He, do, he does uh, tutorials on JavaScript, jQuery, obviously PHP, and some other things. Um, also, some stuff that I do, like HTML and CSS as well. And so uh, it's an excellent resource if you want to learn more about JavaScript jQuery. Uh, and this is where I got this from. But basically, I'm referencing the pop-up. I'm getting the, uh, I'm referencing the uh, uh, pop art div. I'm uh, putting into a variable called pop-up. I want the content height. I named it content height. And it's going to be the offset height. Um, and the window.inner height is the like going like this. It's like the window.inner height. And so, um, you know, I have, every, I have a, a set to this method, that offset height here. Uh, so, if it reaches a certain, it's basically your Y coordinate. So, if it reaches a certain area, um, the JavaScript lets the browser know, hey, you've reached a certain area within your browser, basically. Adam Corey does a better job explaining it than I can explain it. Anyways, I have an if statement here. If Y is greater than or equal to content height, I want the pop-up that's dot visibility equal visible. If you remember by default, I have it hidden. And if it reaches to a thousand, I want it to be hidden. So very simple. Um, and then of course, to call that function, you would say window dot on scroll equals whatever you name that function, which is y handler. So if I were to hit save. And if I were to reload, it comes up with the pop-up exactly the way I want it. And it disappears the way I want it, and it reappears the way I want it. The only thing now I need to, to uh, program is this X button. So I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. The first thing you need to do is you need to reference jQuery inside your HTML document. Notice this thing says Google on here, jQuery.js, all this other stuff. This is how you get jQuery on an HTML document. How did I do that? Well, real simple. Just go to Google, type in jQuery, uh, jQuery Google. It's the first page, and you go right here. Scroll down to where it says jQuery. Copy and paste this line here. And you're going to paste it inside your HTML document right here. You got to add this HTTP to it, and the colon slash slash, and that's all you got to do. And then, we're going to program it using jQuery. And here is my jQuery code. I called it closer. Uh, in order to start jQuery, you always start it the same way. Dollar sign document dot ready function, just like you see it here. Um, close X. I want to bind that X to a click function. And whenever it's clicked, I want the close X in itself to hide, as well as the pop art div to hide. And then, of course, I close all this, and that's it. So, when I save it and I reload it, I should be able to close it now. Oh, actually, no, it won't, because I didn't reference it inside here. i got to put on click equals closer. Just like so. Oops. There we go. 
and now it should uh, it should go ahead and work now. So we get save. Oops, go back to my hit reload. And now I should be able to click off of it and it's done. And it closes just like I want it to. Then of course if I want to test it out, it reload the page, see if it disappears and it does, reappears, disappears, and it does indeed close out. So that's all you need to do for to make a pop art. It's not too hard, not too complicated. Um, but anyways, to show you the website that I'm talking about that I got that code from, uh, the if statement I did myself, and I kind of altered it a little bit for what I wanted to do. But at any rate, just type in develop PHP. And this is the first one that comes up. Click on it. And this is Adam Corey's uh, website here. It's not my website. This is Adam Corey's website. But he's got some really cool tutorials on here how to do certain things, uh, how to make parallax uh, effects and using different things in CSS3 and JavaScript as well as some other stuff in HTML. Uh, so definitely check out his website. He's got some really cool stuff on there. He's got a lot of tutorials. Real nice guy. Uh, I, I suggest you check him out. Uh, that's where I got that code from. Um, but anyways, that is all for my tutorial. Um, I may do some bonus content um, and show you how to make a scroll or a slider here. A dynamic slider through JavaScript. Also, um, some bonus content might be coming to where if you click on this image, it creates a light box effect. Uh, so that way everything is darkened all around it and the image gets bigger inside the center here. Kind of like it would like zoom in sort of deal. And also another bonus episode on how you would make money on a website like this. How to place your affiliate links in here and how to sign up for an affiliate program and place ads in here that, that could make you some money if you want to do a website like this. Uh, so look out for any bonus content I may do on this. Um, but as far as everything else, we are completely done. I'll see you in the next tutorial. This is Travis signing out.